Welcome. Today I have an exciting update that you will find in Google Sheets. You can now manage projects and tasks with the new timeline view. Let's go ahead and dive deeper. The new timeline view enables you to easily interact with project information and can help you manage things such as marketing campaigns, project milestones, schedules, cross-team collaboration, and so much more. So now that you know the why, let's go ahead and look at a sample. Also, this sample, feel free to find in the description and go ahead and try to follow along with this video if you choose to. Just go ahead and make your own copy and you can go ahead and try to replicate what I'm going to do throughout this video. With that, let's look at the data that we have here. This is an example of a communication plan that we use for one of our initiatives. With that, we have a subject, a start date, end date, format, who is responsible for creating, who is responsible for sending, and at the end, is the task completed and was sent by using the checkbox field. Again, this is an example of using the timeline view. So this is the data source that we will pull when creating the timeline view. Again, this is always subject to to change for your own personal business needs, but keep in mind you'll need a strong row header like I do in row one. And obviously keyword timeline, you will probably need a date as well. And you can see I have two date fields in this spreadsheet. Now with that, I have the data ready to go and now I'm ready to insert the timeline view. You can go to the top and select insert and select timeline. Then you'll need to select your, your data range. Google will help you because they can see that you have a suggested range, or you can always go ahead and select your data range. But in my scenario, it looks like sheet one, A1 to G7 will be just perfect for my demonstration. So I'll go ahead and select the suggested date range. And then I'm going to click OK. Then you will notice there's two sheets at the bottom. You have the sheet one, which is the data that we just reviewed. And then you have a new sheet called timeline one. So with that, you can see there's a new layer here and it looks like a timeline. Let's go ahead and see the ways you can customize this timeline. Up at the top, you can see that you can select timeline by, view by days, months, quarters, years, and multi-year. You also see there's some keyboard shortcuts as well if you choose to by clicking D for dog to get to the day view if you want. Then if you just move to the right, you have comfortable or condensed. Again, your choice, your preference. You do have some zoom capabilities as well. When you click on settings, you can see then you have options to adjust your timeline view on the right hand side. We're used to this navigation toolbar on the right hand side when we're editing things in doc natives. First thing we want to review is make sure the date range is selected the, with the correct information. Obviously, if you add more data into sheet one in this example, you would want to adjust your data range. And that's not what we're going to practice today, but be aware of that as that is a pretty common practice within Google Sheets. Then you wanna select your start date. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the drop down. You see that you see all the row headers that we just discussed in sheet one. Start date sounds perfect to be the start date. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it start date. Then you have end date. Now this is optional. You don't have to have an end date, but let's just make sure we understand what it is pulling. You'll notice that the um, Educate the TAMs, Educate Support Staff is just a one day event. But you'll notice the TAMs connect with each agency. It's starting from the November 15th. And if I scroll to the right all the way to December 3rd. So the end date for that particular task in hand was December 3rd. So I'm going to keep the end date there. But if you don't have a second date, which is probably maybe common for some of your spreadsheets, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you what it looks like when you do not have a date for the end. I'm gonna go ahead and select no option. And then you can see that it removed that date range of November 15th through December 3rd since I removed the end date. I'm gonna go ahead and just select the end date just to show you that as well. And then you have the card title. I am pulling the row subject, which is a lot of times might be your task, um, description, or so much more but it gives me a great understanding of what is the task is needing to be done with the subject card title. But again, you can adjust it to whatever way you want and go from there. Now, what's really cool is the following optional fields. So if we look, we have a card color. What does that mean? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to select a field and then show you how it works when you adjust the card color. I'm gonna go ahead and select the row header of subject. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that I'm gonna select the column subject. Now I'm gonna go up here and select educate support staff up in the timeline view. 
Then when you select the item in the timeline view, you will see an option to edit that data. You will also see all the details that are pulling from the spreadsheet within that data range. So we can see the start date, the end date, what kind of format it was going to be sent, who is responsible, and etc. Also remember it was a checkbox option within the sent and false means it's not been completed, true means it's been completed. Then you have the option to select card color. So I'm going to go ahead and select the card color and I'm going to go ahead and select blue. You also have the option to customize. We know that color variations do help us have that visual understanding of what needs to be done. So now that I've changed the educated sports staff blue, I want to just quickly go over to the sheet one just to show you what also happens when you change the card color. When you select the sheet one, notice that the subject, the column that I selected has turned blue as well. So how cool is that? So let's go ahead and click edit data. Maybe I wanted to make it a change to the card details. Maybe the start date has changed the end date or et cetera. Obviously you can go back to sheet one and do that as well, but this is a quick way to go directly to the data as well by clicking on the green button, edit data. When you click on the green button, you can make adjustments. So for example, if I did want to change the date of 11.10 to maybe 11.12, um, I can go ahead and do so, and it will automatically adjust the timeline view. Should we check it out? I'm going to go ahead and click on the timeline view, and you can see now it's expanded, and there is a date of 11.10 to um, the 12th of November. Let's keep going. I'll show you the best things at the end. I'm going to go back to the settings and adjust my timeline view. When I do that, you also were scrolling back down to the optional fields, and you can see there's additional things you can do to customize the view. I'm going to go ahead and select card detail. So right now the card detail is just the subject, right? But maybe I want to add a little more additional information in my timeline view. I could go ahead and write uh, select format. Maybe I want to know what type of medium we're going to be sending this communication. I'm going to go ahead and select format and you can see then additional text have been added to each one of those tasks in my timeline view. So that is awesome. With that, my best one is for last. I like to know who is doing what and so on, and who do I need to so-called nag. So what I can do is I can group the cards. So you may want to group it by date if you choose to, or format, whatever it works for you. But in my example, I want to know who is responsible for sending these communications or who is responsible for creating them. Either way it works. I'm going to go ahead and select who is responsible for creating. What happens then, you'll see that it's grouping the cards by the person that is responsible for creating the content for this communication plan. I can always quickly adjust this and change who is responsible for sending. Trainer 1 is the one that's responsible for sending all this content out. You can see how valuable this would be in a meeting, like who's got what, who needs to do what in that particular project. So again, I just wanted to show you this amazing update as it pertains to the Smart Canvas concept and it allows you to be more interactive and engaging in your projects. So with that, just a reminder, just to check the resources posted below to learn more about this amazing update. Thank you.